At long last, final chapter of Bleach is here. And we can now finally say farewell. It's been a 15 year journey for the series, but it has finally run its course. The last chapter left off with a cliffhanger of a whereabout of Yauch possibly coming back to life. Now, the announcement is a live adaptation. It's not a sequel, nor is a second run for an anime. Which is disappointing to a lot of people, but you gotta understand, the live adaptation is actually a big news. And I know they use a big page, a one solo page, just to make a, a crazy hype for the announcement. While the other series didn't do that, I understand that. It's still a big deal. It's just not something that we don't really care. And I could understand that, but you just have to comprehend that this is, in case, a big deal in business sense. With that said, we have to see this chapter as a definitive end. So how is the ending? Is it bad? Is it good? Is it anything redeeming? Is it grand spectacular? Here's the thing. The spoiler caused a massive storm that is hard to believe that this such an ending can create one. Such as destroying DVD, I posted in my Tumblr page as well as in my Twitter account of this image of all the broken DVDs and one of them happened to be Bleach Movie 3. It's mind boggling to know how people can really be so invested to the point they would destroy their own collection. I know a lot of people have their own choices. I can understand that's their money, that's their product, that's how they handle their things. What is the verdict on the final chapter? What is the verdict of the ending? People, have regarded Naruto's ending as one of the worst. Whether you agree or not, there are people that have thought of this. There are people that really believe that Naruto ending is among the worst thing they have ever read. When this chapter arrived, I asked one thing to myself. In fact, I would like to ask you guys one thing. Would you believe me if I say this is worse than Naruto? Perhaps it's debatable somehow, but as of now, I am shocked to find another caliber this awful of a chapter, awful ending, something that I cannot comprehend. And I know you could try to say it's all one weekly shonen jump fault, but again, I don't even know if it's really weekly shonen jump or Kubo just don't care anymore. I don't want to care anymore. I don't know what was the result. All I know is the ending sucked. So here's the pro of this chapter. Aizen is not really dead. So he's around to bring, get ready for this, a morale. A moral to Bleach. Because apparently Bleach is now deep. Apparently it has a moral sense that we could learn. All because it's shonen. We, we forget about the idea it could just be a battle manga. Where it's just somebody just kicking ass. And just have something a uh, very low minimum of Nakama speech or whatever. It's just about kicking ass. But now Bleach somehow has attacked on Moro. But hey, Aizen is alive. Great. That's all I could ask for. That's all I got for Pro. I mean, I guess you could throw in the art. Decent still. But it all stops there. As for the rest, who wrote this? Who wrote this chapter? For starters, I feel like the character resolution it seems rather lacking. It seems weak because the fact that we only have one chapter left, which is this one, and it's supposed to be the ending, and somehow we were stuck to focus on the fact that Yauch could come back to life and something that is so irrelevant and something that could have been done two chapters ago somehow could have squeezed in two chapters ago of one moment that has to do with Aizen and Yauch, which I will get to that soon. But I had to start with Chad. Chad being a boxer, I don't know. For some reason, I could have sworn that he does not want to fight with his fists. He does not want to do it, harm people. He doesn't want to do that, right? If I recall correctly. So what the hell is he doing in a boxing where he's asking for money and entertainment? Ishida is understandable. He ends up being a doctor. I understand that he said that he doesn't want to be a doctor. I get that. I already understand that part. I get it. It's the idea of not following the footsteps of his phone father. Only to end up being a follower in the end. Because that's just how far and son bounding comes in. I could get that. Forget it. That's very basic. Now here's the problem coming in. With Orihime and Ichigo. It turns out this 
last two chapter has finally made it clear these characters especially the main one are really poorly developed because it feels like a matter of fact i can't say it feels like because now i can see the conclusion it's just they don't have that much character when you think about it you see in the last arc it doesn't even feel like the last arc it felt like an arc that just ended and then the next journey can come in anytime but the problem is this is the ending so there is no more to it so we see orihime and ichigo they really have no character to give us a sense of accomplishment what accomplishment they have you could tell from other series even if they are so generic or basic or whatever like such as being the king of the pirate the hokage whatever at least they have some morality or goal sense of accomplishment even gintama who has their world taken over by aliens amato but they could get it back and that's what's happening now so what about bleach i just never found out what was the whole point of it it's just like job well done and that was it. And that's something that just really comes to my mind with Orihime Ichigo. Why I'm only singing them out and I could not sing out everybody. I already talked about this in the last chapter review. But in this case, I'm talking about these two because they are the main character. This is why I could understand why people did not like Orihime. I don't really like her, but I don't hate her. But really major reasons why people do not want to support her because it's just something that is very lacking out of her character development it's the same thing for Ichigo Ichigo that did not have a great battle it did not have an ending that deserved a great showcase of a protagonist instead it just showcased how lucky they gotten with a damn arrowhead that everything has become a deus ex machina you don't feel anything achievable it's nothing that feels so granted it doesn't feel like you're so happy for them instead you're just watching them feel like they're starting up a new arc but again this is the ending so there is no more to it anything why does it feel empty of course there is one idea but i'll get to that because that is something that I guess nobody can ignore and I wish I could ignore because that's the freaking main topic for the past days of since the spoiler release. But going to Yauch, this so tacked on. All of a sudden, now he's telling us the big reveal that of his character. Now he becomes Obito 2.0 without being a Rin part but being a sympathetic guy who just wants peace on earth by having no fear erasing fear what is that for why now what what is exactly can accomplish it doesn't have anything to do with his entire character base since the beginning of his arrival in this series and now all of a sudden we supposed to feel like in some form of way of a sympathetic to him why he was the villain he is the guy that brought darkness to everyone what is the point of him to even to do say to something like that and the reason why for it is to have eyes and to have a morality tacked on lesson for everybody and it's about courage and i get it but it does not fit to this series this doesn't need that it doesn't even ask for it who come up with this shit Nobody is even asking for anything about this whole courage thing. And why Aizen? Aizen is a word of mouth now? How the fuck did that even come about? Because the fact is, Ichigo has not much to say in the ending. Again, going back to the idea these characters have not anything to complete. So it just feels like, huh. I uh, have eyes at the top because he's a better character. That is granted. That is true. Maybe that is not true for everybody, but it's sure truth to me. But the fact he's talking about this whole courage thing uh, about movement, it seems so out of character for Aizen, the guy who's trying to take over everything, who's trying to take over the Soul King. I understand there's other problems, such as plot holes. There are a bazillion plot holes. Somebody even list them. I even found out there's so much more than I even thought because I did not want to think about this much since this series has progressed so long. The story has become so convoluted. I don't even care anymore because how much this encourage this story really takes in because how much the writer does not want to suck us into this universe anymore it just seems like it just wants to show us 
some of the cool actions, no matter if it's an ass pool, but just get out of the way so he could just go home, collect the check, and wear more sunglasses or whatever thing he wants to do. I know people would still blame weakly Shonen Jump. Again, I don't know who to blame yet, but I don't want to put blame anyway because what I'm talking about right now is this chapter. This chapter is my main focus, and right now, this chapter is only telling me how poorly written, how poorly constructed this chapter was, how poorly demonstrated these characters are really just so single dimensional, and it just doesn't really have anything that really says this is a great, memorable series. It just doesn't really get that. Again, Aizen gets the last big words. Ichigo feels like he's just there. It feels like we're just seeing some slice of life characters that we just figured out that they're just becoming a main character in the, out of nowhere. When you think about it, that's what it's the sense of how it feels like. Only to the fact is, we actually see the children 10 years later. I don't understand this part because it only suggested that these kids grow up since nine years ago or maybe even 10 years ago, but it probably is nine years ago. So the way how the timeline works almost suggested that Ichigo and Rukia just get her off their back and get her away to get children just to make this whole story get fit in to tie in or whatever. But why not use 20 years? What's wrong with 20 years? 10 years is enough? It doesn't seem enough unless you should have made those kids 5 year old or whatever. But then again, it's hard to say. I don't know. But that's not the problem. They just have no impact. There's just a lack of investment. None of these characters have anything that make us say, I'm glad he ends up this way. Now, people with pairing talk, well, I'll get to that very soon. People with pairing talk is the only one that will actually say, I'm happy for that person for being with that lover or whatever. I really would like to say the same thing if they develop well. But there is no development. There's no really credibility. And that's a lot of people that's forgetting these days. The credibility. When people don't see the credibility, then they should not really say this is a well done performance of writing a character to fall in love with the other character or the character that actually feels like they have achieved something they really long desire. There is none of that in this series. There is none of that with a lot of characters. The only thing I got was Rukia being the captain. That's great for her. But everything else, everybody feels like it's just tacked on going there. The fact that Chad actually becomes a boxer. Out of the blue, the last time we saw Chad was fighting a bunch of big titans. Some tag on titan crap. And all of a sudden, he's a boxer now. Ishida, he does an arrowhead. There's no interaction anymore. There's nothing like that. Ishida just watching Chad from the hospital. Everything felt rushed. And because of rush, there is no impact. There's no investment. The ending felt incomplete. As to say, new arc is coming. There is no more new arc. The series is over. What is there to come? There is no more to come. Because it's everything ended. And it just had the audacity to even do a pull a crappy move to leave it open for a sequel a sequel they say hey naruto guess what i'm following your footsteps too or i'm just copying you or i'm just doing what every shonen jump would like to do because we need more money <laughs> this is such a shitty move i know i ranted and i apologize for this but it's just it's amazing how empty this chapter felt to me i never seen such a uninspired of a piece of work that this guy has brought 686 chapters, not including the negative chapter numbers. Alright, I guess I have to address the elephant in the room, and that is the pairing talk. I have to save this last because I know a lot of people wants to know what's the problem of the chapter or the ending itself. We've all had to resort to pairing talk, and we've all resorted to me be considered as a salty pairing fan. First of all, I don't even care about Perry in this series. Why would I start caring about it now? Second, it doesn't really matter if that's the Perry or not. The problem is, is other things such as plot hole. And I even covered about that. I only covered about the chapter itself. If I were to talk about the overall of the series, I would go so deep about these plot holes that so many problems of the series has and it did not address and did not accomplish anything. So here's the pairing talk. Now the pairing is Ichigo and Orihime and Renji and Rukia. They all together, they have their child, and they met at the end. It's supposed to be cute, I guess, but here's the thing. These pairings are forced. 
are unneeded. I felt nothing because I see the memo. I see the bigger picture. The reason why I call it force. The reason why I see it the necessary for them to do it, even though it's truly not needed for all of us. In fact, the series could survive if it just didn't have any pairing at all. It could survive without it. It didn't want to have pairing. It's the only only one to have become a couple. Because think about it. They are the only guys to produce child. And they're doing this because of one reason. To suit it for a parallel feeling. Think about the chapter title. Death and Strawberry. Parallel to chapter 1. So the only way to connect the dot with Ichigo and Rukia first meet up in chapter 1. Is to have somebody relatable to those guys. So you have to separate them. You pretty much have to force Renji and Rukia in order to get paired up. And then produce a child to make that parallel exist. To make that parallel work for Ichigo and Orihime. It doesn't matter who's going out who. It's the same case where Chocho from Naruto even exists. It's the similar case and if I'm wrong then so be it. Until the word of mouth from Kubo comes out. This is the feeling I get the sense. I could tell that is the feeling. He may not even come out and say it right there but you could tell that is the case because the parallel of the death of strawberry, the fact that human and Shinigami first meet up, the twist in this one is the fact that that kid of Ichigo is also a Shinigami. So you're seeing double Shinigami. It's like, oh, look at that, a twist. That's why it's like, oh, it's different. Ho ho. It's only ploy for that case of a storyline, a case of possible sequel, a case of just using. For the ending sake of a parallel. Like hey. History repeats itself. But in a different funny way. That is the reason why. I do not feel invested. I feel like it's irrelevant. It feels like. That's the reason why. When the chapter ended. This series ended with these kids. More so than the adults. And this is why. A lot of people are getting pissed off. With these kind of endings. Because it's not the fact they're pairing lost. It's the fact that they lose the focus. Of the real meaning. Of why this series. Was so popular in the first place. People are invested. With characters they grow up with. Such as Ichigo. Rukio. Urihime. Chad. All the other characters. It could be the same case for any other series that has been going on for over 5, 10, 15 years. And Bleach, once again, falls under the line just to rely on the kids. That's what people supposedly care. Pairings, right? In my opinion, it's more than that. It's actually more about just addressing a funny way of parallel to the chapter 1. I didn't care about the pairing and this is so incredibly unnecessary. But whatever, it happens. It's just the way it is. This series, it has a case of what happens if the least popular pairing becomes canon. Here we are. A lot of people are pissed. A lot of people are trashing things. A lot of people feel like they want to go on a riot. I'm not sure if it's true, but I'm hearing story that somebody's holding an event where they Giving out keychain of Ichigo and Rukia as to say, sorry about your pairing didn't win. Here's the keychain. I don't know if that's true, but if it is, holy shit, good luck on your end. I know this is a rant more than a review, but I already gave you a lot of pointers. I hope you can understand them. If you don't understand them, you can ask me right away. You can ask me in the comment below. Just Understand that I did not like this chapter. I thought this ending was the most atrocious thing I've read in a, such a long time. I lost my breath <laughs> so much. I, God, why? Where's that damn Kogi S Mimi's with the whole not the shit again? <laughs> that's that's what my impression. That's the only thing I could think of right now. And do I regret reading this series? You know, the way how they ended, it kind of makes me feel like that. I try not to feel that way, but when an ending gives you that sense of feeling that you know that the ending is terrible. And you know that when it does that, it's the worst kind of feeling that any fans don't want to feel. Well, everyone has their own opinion. It's mine. It's, of course, mine. I have to give this chapter, the final chapter, a 2. I understand, we all have a different opinion. All of us have their choices. I'm not going to come out 
and say that you guys are fool to like this series. I'm not going to say you guys are morons to like the ending. Everybody have their own preference. I did not like the ending, but it doesn't mean that I'm right. It doesn't mean that I think everybody's foolish enough to like the ending. All I know is this. I did not like it. I thought it was crap. And that's it. I know a lot of people are not found of other people not agreeing with their opinion. But you just have to understand that not a lot of people are going to think the same way. As you can see to all these weekly basis, chapters, reviews for Bleach, it has been going ups and down. And I'm not really hating on Bleach. I've been following this series for almost 10 years, if not it is 10 years. I lost track, but I definitely followed around the time when they were still in Soul Society or in the anime at least. Then I read the manga. But nevertheless, I do have a history with this series. And may I not give any mercy to say this series still lives in my heart. Or say this series is still one of the best. That's just not me. But if you feel that way, then that's okay. That's good on you. And I have nothing else to say. But respect your decision. That's all I'm going to come here for. I know a lot of people do not like the idea that the live adaptation is not what they wanted. But you got to understand, this actually is a big deal. And it is, of course, for money's sake. But it is exposure. It helped Orange. So how it helped other movies. I believe it helped Assassination Classroom. I That's why I heard. But it has helped for sales. It has helped for exposure. So for Bleach, maybe it'll help from some exposure. And I know somebody would say they're only using this in order to test some water so they could do more Shonen Jump movies. Who knows? But the point is, it's getting something out of it. Instead of getting nothing out of it, it's getting something. And not for us, maybe, but for everybody who is not aware of Bleach, believe it or not, there are people that are not aware of Bleach. They could end up seeing this movie and they could give more exposure to Bleach series. And who knows? Maybe something good come out of it. Pretty much done with Kubo work, even though this is his first, actually second or probably third, I don't know. I know zombie powder happened, but point is everybody has their own take. And everybody has their own decision what to do next after the series end. And the only way I can say is make up your decision. Well, my so-called thoughts is told. Don't let yours on hold. Just leave a comment below. Ask a question right away. Leave a comment. Anything. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this and want more of this, subscribe to my channel. And my world will be yours to stay. It's no more bleach after this. It was a journey. It was something else. Good or bad, it was a journey. Until next time, take care.